Got your Bible today, turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter number 3 and verse number 5. Proverbs, chapter 3 and verse number 5. Isn't it a blessing to be able to come to God's house? It's such a blessing, such a blessing. Oh, yes. Frequent the house of God and you'll be blessed. You'll be helped. Over in one of the Psalms, he said, I, my feet almost slid. He said, I was ready to throw in the towel because it seemed like I was having all kind of trouble. And said the wicked, they was prospering, they was doing good. He said, I was ready to throw in the town, quit, until I went into the house of the Lord. And he said, I understood. I understood their end. Understood the things I need to understand. Well, that's the way it is when you come to God's house. You understand a lot of things the world don't understand. In the book of uh, Proverbs, chapter number 3 and verse number 5, the Bible says this. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lead not unto thine own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. Don't trust your own heart. It'll lead you astray. But trust in the Lord. In all thy ways, in all thy ways. Did he say some of your ways? Part of your ways? One or two of your ways? He said, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. What about that? Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. In other words, there's blessings on top of blessings, right? Let's pray. Father in heaven, it's a blessing to be here today. We thank you for the good mercy of God, the good grace of God. We thank you for your people that together together in this place to worship you. And we thank you that we have a copy of the word of God that we can read and understand and receive blessings from God. We pray you'd speak through thy servant today. Take my tongue, take my vocal cords. I pray that you'd take my mind, take my spirit, and let it be yours today to glorify you. Have your way, Lord, and we'll say thank you in Jesus' lovely name. Amen and amen. I'd like to speak to you upon this word acknowledgments, acknowledgment. The Bible said, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. And so that's what we need to do is acknowledge him in all of our ways. Well, what does the word acknowledge mean? It means to admit to be true. It means to confess. It means to recognize the authority or the claim of. We need to recognize his authority, God's authority. Recognize his claim over you and over me and over every soul. God made you. He's your creator. And so he has the right to express and claim authority. It means to express thanks. It means to admit or affirm as genuine. The opposite of that means to deny. You either acknowledge or you deny. And a lot of people are denying that the Lord is God and all that today. We know that they Deny that fact, and I'm glad you acknowledge that and you re receive that and admit that. Well, let's just jump in here right quick and say some things we need to acknowledge. First of all, we need to acknowledge our sins, right? 
We need to acknowledge our sins. I've heard people say, I don't sin. I, I live a good life. Hey, hey, you lie right there. You lie. You're the biggest liar in shoe leather when you say you don't sin. The Bible said if you say you haven't sinned, you're a liar and the truth is not in you. And so if you say that today, boy, you are in trouble, I'm telling you. The Bible said in the book of Hosea, chapter 5, and verse 15, I will go and return to my place. This is God talking. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face in their affliction. They will seek me early. God said, I'll go and hide myself. I'll go back to my place. I won't pay any attention to them until they acknowledge their sin, until they confess they have sinned and the, that particular sin. A lot of people say, Lord, I've sinned. If I've sinned. Well, you know if you sinned or not. Don't say if you sinned. Say, Lord, this is the sin I've done. Uh, the Bible said if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. The Bible said in Psalm 51, this is David's prayer. Evidently, after he'd committed that great sin, the Bathsheba, he said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. I'm glad in the New Testament he don't blot them out, he washes them away. He goes on to say, Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquities, cleanse me from my sin. That's what he does in the New Testament times. He don't cover your sins, he washes them white as snow, he washes them away. I'm glad my sins are gone, they've been washed away by the precious blood of Christ. He don't remember those things against me anymore. He said, For I acknowledge my transgression. He said, I acknowledge my transgression. He's confessing his sin. He's confessing to God what he's done. He said, uh, my sin is ever before me against thee and thee. Only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. So we see David, he's confessing his sin to God. He knows his sin. He knows he's done wrong. Nathan poured his finger in his face and said, thou art the man. You're the man. You've done uh, this, what this little parable I've given you. You're the man that took that little poor man's sheep and uh, killed it. And you had plenty of sheep. You had plenty and uh, you took that little poor man's sheep he said thou art the man then the Bible said in Psalm 32 Psalm I acknowledge my sin unto thee and my iniquity have I not hid oh brother you can't hide your sins you can run but you can't hide you can't get away you can't cover your sin far enough deep enough uh, there's just no place you can hide your sins and so he said uh, my sins have I not hid I will confess my transgressions on the Lord and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin when you confess your sins brother you're getting on holy ground when you confess that you sinned against God you confess your transgressions when you con uh, confess your offenses then you're getting on holy ground where God can forgive. He said he forgave my iniquity brother. Aren't you glad God is a forgiving God? He's a God who washes our sins away. He's a God who takes care of those things. In the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 3 and verse 13. Only acknowledge thine iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God and hast scattered thy way to the strangers under every green tree and ye have not obeyed my voice saith the Lord. He said confess your sins. Confess what you've done. And so we need to confess. We need to acknowledge our sin. And if you're not willing to acknowledge your sin, then God will not forgive. He'll go back and hide it in his place until you confess your sins. And when you begin to confess your sins, when you begin to deal with your sins, then there's a God in heaven who will listen to you. He'll forgive you. He'll wash you and make you clean. Aren't you glad that God is a forgiving God? Oh, you say, preacher, you don't know how bad I've been. I don't care how bad you've been. I'm glad the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. And not just one sin, but all sin. And so you got to deal with your sins. The Bible said over in uh, Corinthians there in chapter 11, dealing with the Lord's Supper, he said if we, you know, if we judge ourselves, he won't judge us. If you deal with your sins, if you'll confess your sins, if you'll be honest about your sins, then God will forgive you. And God will not have to deal with you in judgment, but if you don't, brother, he will deal with you in judgment. And when God deals in judgment, you're not going to like that whipping he's going to give you. No, no, no. Boy, I never did like it. Mama got that stole wood. I never did like it when she got that razor stop. I never did like when she got them hickeys. No siree. Boy, I knew I had it. And so that's the way it is, brother. When you disobey the God of heaven, you don't deal with your sins and you don't confess your sins, then God's going to use that great rod of chastisement upon you. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 19. Hast thou utterly rejected Judah? Hast thou, hath thy soul for uh, loath Zion? Why hast thou submitted us? There is no healing for us. We look for we looked for peace, and there was no good. And for the time of healing, behold, trouble. 
We acknowledge, O Lord, our wickedness and the iniquity of our fathers. We have sinned against Thee. Boy, when you begin to say, Lord, I've sinned. Oh, there's a God in heaven that's willing to forgive you. He's willing to cleanse you. Isn't it amazing that God is willing to forgive when you confess your sins? I mean, you honestly confess them, and you're willing to turn. The Bible said if we confess and uh, repent and turn from our sins, then he's going to forgive. Now, if you just confess, you can run in a little confessional uh, hole somewhere and say, Father, I want you to forgive this, and I want you to forgive, forgive that. I got drunk. I cussed. I had a, a fire with some woman. I want you to forgive, and he'll say you're forgiven. But if you go back out and do it again, brother, there's no forgiveness with God. God, right? I mean, God wants to, us to really mean it. When we say we've sinned and we're willing to repent of it, he wants us to truly mean it from the depths of our heart. And when we do, brother, he is going to forgive us. We need to acknowledge our sin. How long has it been since you've acknowledged to God you've sinned? Has it been a long time? You may be a long time uh, behind. Oh, me, we need to confess, acknowledge our sin. Then I want to say, uh, not only should we confess our sins, but I want you to know some things we need to acknowledge about God. Some things we need to acknowledge about God. We need to acknowledge our sins. We need to look at ourselves and acknowledge our sins and our offenses and our faults and all those things, but we need to look at God just a little bit and see some things we need to acknowledge about him. Number one, we need to acknowledge his mercy. You know that? God is mercy. The Bible said his mercy endures forever. His mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. Isn't that amazing? That's what he says in the book of Psalms 100. He said, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endeareth to all generations. His mercy is everlasting. Aren't you glad God is a merciful God? Sometimes people will have mercy one time and that's about it. But he is a merciful God. You know, he told him about forgiveness over there. He said, uh, uh, Peter said, Lord, should I forgive my brother seven times? And he thought he was really doing something. Seven times I'm willing to forgive my brother. Lord, I'm really, isn't that something? Lord, I'm willing to forgive him seven times. Jesus said, no, 70 times seven. Boy, that's just an unlimited number. Lord, just keep on forgiving. You know, God is willing to keep on forgiving you and keep on forgiving you. If you're willing to keep on confessing your sins, he's willing to uh, keep on forgiving you. And so just keep on confessing your sins. Be honest with God and, and let him uh, bless you with his mercy. And so we are to recognize and acknowledge his mercy. It's God's mercy that we're not consumed. It's God's mercy. And then we ought to acknowledge his blessings. The Bible said the blessings are upon the head of the just. Blessings are upon the head of the just. Anybody in here been blessed today? If you have, wave your hand at me. If you haven't, we're going to come back and pray with you. Because there's something bad wrong. <laughs> I'm telling you, brother, we experience God's blessings every day. When I woke up this morning, that was a blessing. When I was able to get out of bed, that was a blessing. I know people that's woke up and they couldn't get out of bed because they had a stroke. Uh, they had a heart attack or something. They couldn't get out of bed. But thank God we was able to get out of bed, right? We was able to put our clothes on. We was able to eat breakfast. We was able to get in the car and come to church. That's a blessing. I mean, count your blessings. Name them one by one and see what great things God has done. He's done great things. We need to acknowledge his blessings. Some people said it's luck. No, it's not luck. It's the blessings of God, right? No such thing as luck. I'm glad Almighty God blesses the just. The Bible said, of course, he blesses the wicked too. And uh, if he did more, they would be in trouble. But there comes a day God deals with them. The Bible said again in Proverbs 28, 28, a faithful man shall abound with blessings. A faithful man will abound with blessings. Are you faithful to him? Are you faithful and true to Jesus? He said you'll abound with blessings. Hey, brother, that's been a story of my life. I have to say God has blessed me and with a bountiful blessings. That means running over Bountiful means running over. Praise God. I look back through my life, and boy, my blessings have been running over. Oh, I've had problems, no question about that. Everybody does. But I'm glad the blessings of God overrides all those things. Isn't that wonderful? The Bible said again in the book of Ephesians, chapter 1 and verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We're blessed spiritually, right? We've been blessed spiritually. You're in the house of God, and you're being blessed. You was in Sunday school, I hope, and uh, you got a spiritual blessing there. I mean, any time the Word of God is opened and you hear the Word of God read, that's a blessing. And when God saved you, that was a spiritual blessing. When God pours out His Spirit upon you, that's a blessing. When God leads you by His Holy Spirit, that's a blessing. Any time God uh, talks to you but through His Word or through the Holy Spirit, that's a blessing. And so he's blessed us with all these spirits of blessing in heavenly places according to as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy without blame before him in love. What a blessing that was. He chose us before the foundation of the world. But remember, it's in Christ. A lot of people, 
Look at that. And they, they get mixed up on predestination and election because they leave that little phrase out in Christ and Christ and Christ and him and him. Brother, that's the only way you use preordained to go to heaven in Christ. And if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, hey, brother, you wouldn't include in that number. It's those that believe and put their faith in Christ. That's the only crowd that's going. And so we've been blessed with all these spiritual blessings. We all acknowledge our blessings, right? Have you acknowledged the blessings of God and say, Lord, thank you for the many blessings you've given me? Then I want to say, number two, that you ought to thank God for his, uh, his blessings in the, that it's his tithe you ought to be given. <laughs> Amen. I'll go back to Proverbs, I mean, probably, yeah, Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 9. Honor the Lord with their substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. The first fruits. Well, I'd take that to be the tithe. The Bible said you, you, you give your tithe. That's right off the top, right? When you get $100, you give the first 10 of it to the Lord. You know what he's going to do? He's going to bless you. You see, you're, you're acknowledging God's blessings on you, that he's blessed you financially, and you've given back a little bit of what God's given you. I wouldn't, I would, hey, I don't want to be an old uh, skint flint and be stingy with God. I mean, if you're going to be stingy with somebody, be stingy with yourself. Don't be stingy with the God of heaven. I mean, you can be a tight wad, but don't be tight with God. Because God's going to bless you and bless you and bless you because he, that's what he promised in the book of Malachi. And somebody said, well, that's the Old Testament. Well, that's a principle. You see, you don't throw out principles just because it's in the Old Testament. Don't be like the Jew. They don't read the New Testament because it's a New Testament. And a lot of folks won't read the Old Testament because they say it's old. Hey, brother, there's principles there that you need to get a hold of. You see, uh, we build the New Testament upon the Old Testament. And so it's a wonderful thing to acknowledge him. The Bible said, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. I, I wish I could get this story straight. I've tried to tell it before about Brother Ed Ballou preaching about the, uh, the, you know, the whole cotton farmers. And said, uh, you know, they said them uh, bow weed was getting in the cotton. He said, this one old farmer planted his field, and he said, now, Lord, I'm depending on you to take care of this. I'm going to tithe out of this. And said, I'm going to depend on you to take care of them and keep these bow weevils out. And said, lo and behold, said the cotton came up and said, one day here come this old bow weevil going up the road. Here come two bow weevils down the road. And said, they had this bow weevil on a stretcher. And they said, what's wrong? What's wrong with him? Said, well, he's been that farmer up there. He's been his cotton up there and he got sick. <laughs> I mean, the way he told it was so funny.